Okay, call to order. It's now 7 p.m. on Thursday, February 27th, 2014. I call this meeting of the Bellevue Planning Commission to order. Please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Harbin, uh, roll call, please. Compton. Here. Jacobson. Here. Dostal. Carnish. Here. Gladbeck. Here. Ackley. Here. Sykes. Here. Kane. Here. Severson. Here. Thank you. This meeting will be conducted in accordance with the Nebraska Open Meetings Act, a copy which can be found in the back vestibule of this hearing room. At this time, I would ask all commissioners and all audience members to please silence or turn off your cell phones pagers or other devices that could disrupt these proceedings. Thank you. At this er uh, time, I'd entertain a motion to, re to uh, revise or approve the Planning Commission meetings minutes of January 20 23rd, 2014. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Ms. Kane, a second by Mr. Severson. Any comments? Commissioners, please vote. All in favor, motion carried. At this time, I'd like to accept into record all staff reports, attachments, memos, and handouts regarding each application. Staff, any updates? No additional handouts. Okay, motion. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Uh, Ackley, second by Mr. Uh, Carnish. Commissioners, vote. All in favor, motion carried. And at this time, I'd like to uh, take a moment and welcome a new uh, commissioner to our panel, uh, Mr. Morgan Sykes. Pleased to have you and hope you enjoy your time here on the commission. So. Uh, tonight, we have no consent agendas items. Uh, we do have three public hearing items uh, for this evening. For each, I will announce the case and then ask if there are any updates from the planning department. After that, the applicant will have an opportunity to present the request. After the applicant has been heard, the public will be allowed to provide any testimony that they would like to have considered into the record. Those testifying should come to the podium, state their name and spell their name, and sign in for the record. Testimony should be limited to five minutes, and I reserve the right to shorten the time if we have a large number of people coming forward to testify. After any testimony is taken, the applicant shall have the opportunity for a rebuttal after which we will close the public hearing. The bottom line, use the golden rule. Treat others who are speaking in the same manner as you and how you would like to be treated when speaking. Our first public hearing tonight is a request for a site plan approval for lot one, Daniels Farm Edition, replat one, located in the southeast one quarter of section five, township 13 north, range 13 east of the sixth prime meridian, Sarpy County, Nebraska, for the purpose of multifamily residential development. Applicant, Chadwick Apartments. General location, 36th Street and Capehart Road. Case number, Z-1401-2. At this time, I have a potential conflict of interest uh, on this particular project, and I will need to recuse myself from this hearing. And at this time, I'll turn it over to Mr. Carnish to run. Let the record indicate that Mr. Gladback has left chambers at 7.04 p.m. Staff, are there any updates? Yes, there are. <clears throat> we have received a revised site plan showing a revised access point uh, for the future ride-in, ride-out driveway and also revised drainage information from the applicant's engineer these have been reviewed by the public works engineer and found to be acceptable. Uh, so we are ready to make a recommendation that this item be approved by the planning commission. And also one other change uh, or one amendment on the mixed use agreement that's attached to your report. We will be adding a provision on there um, 
to include the mixture of uses in the mixed use district. Uh, there'll be no more than 80% of the building area or net developable land area can be a single use category. That's one of the requirements of the mixed use zoning district. I uh, just want to, since we're not getting the entire area in at this time, uh, we're adding that provision to the um, mixed use agreement, um, probably under section four of the agreement that you have before you. And that is all I have for now. <clears throat> Thank you. If the applicant is here, I would invite them to step forward and present their request. Please state your name, address. Yes, my name is Doug Hill, Hill Farrell Associates, 2815 Crystal Drive, Bellevue, representing the applicant here this evening. Good evening, everyone. Uh, we are before you this evening asking for approval of a site plan and a mixed use development on a uh, approximately 7.5 acre piece of ground located at the northwest corner of 36th and Capehart Road. Uh, this is a parcel out of a 13.7 acre piece uh, that is in the process of being replanted, uh, which this, part, this property is also part of a bigger piece, which is the part of the original 270 acres <coughs> that the city of Bellevue acquired oh, 10 years ago, 10, 12 years ago. Uh, the city of Bellevue replanted this area, master planned the area and replanted it uh, a couple years ago and this parcel was created at that time and zoned for mixed use. So uh, we are before you this evening asking for approval for development of a portion of that ground which is in keeping with the mixed use plan. Uh, our proposal this evening is for apartments. Our plan consists of 90 apartments. Um, they're, the buildings are, common, are actually a two-story on one side, the high side, a three-story on the other side. Uh, our makeup of apartments, there'll be 20 uh, one-bedroom apartments, 60 two-bedroom apartments, and 10 three-bedroom apartments. Uh, the amenities that will be on the side and down in the bottom right-hand corner there, you can see the clubhouse area and the pool area. Uh, the clubhouse will have some facilities in there for the tenants' use. Uh, one of the nice things about this property is its proximity to uh, Bellevue Park, everything essentially west of this property is, uh, has been designated by the city of Bellevue as, as a park. Uh, I think in, in those plans there's also a trail system intended to uh, traverse along uh, Quail Creek to the north there. So uh, the developer here is excited about you know, seeing that go in so we can make a connection to that for the use of his tenants. Um, our access as planned is, uh, I think we've been alluded to, we have a right in, right out in the generally the middle portion of our property. That access will be constructed in conjunction with the initial development of the property. Uh, we also have a future access on the north side. Uh, that access has been designated, determined it can be a, what we call a full access uh, <coughs> at that location. You'll notice that the plan shows it's centered on that northerly property line. The intent is for that driveway to serve not only our property, but the property to the north, which is uh, currently owned by St. Matthew's uh, Catholic Church. So that's kind of a multi-purpose access to serve both properties. When we talk about the full service access, you know, the intent is to have a median break at that location so traffic can enter and exit from all directions. So in addition, at a future time, when the, the southern portion of this property develops, uh, we anticipate a connection being made to that commercial area and our southwesterly quarter, which ultimately would extend down to Cape Heart Road and provide another access uh, in and out of the property uh, at that Cape Heart Road point. Um, we are um, in full agreement with the amendments. Staff has uh, recommended to the mixed use agreement. And um, I guess with that, I think that kind of gives you an overview of the project. I'll uh, answer any questions you may have for now or sit down and wait till later. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Hill. Anyone cares to provide public testimony on this matter, whether in favor or opposition, please come forward, state your name, and sign in, please.
I am uh, Father Ron Wazakowski. I am the pastor at St. Matthew's. We own the property abutting this proposed project on the north side. And neither for nor against, we simply have some questions and ask for some clarifications. The entry exit way, as it stands right now, they only receive one entrance exit for 90 units. Parking in the specs say it's up to what, 100 and 200 and some unit parking spaces? Yes. That many cars coming in and only being able to exit to the right during morning and evening rush hours is going to be a disaster. We have traffic backed up in all, in three of the directions at 36th and K Part very often. I come through that intersection at 7.30 each morning from the house to the church property, and sometimes we are backed up two, three, five blocks. A second issue with that, not being able to turn left from the south approaching this property is that we are the next property to the north. The three units there of circular school buildings. We have two entryway or two driveways. <coughs> Our traffic is uh, one way on each of those. One way in, one way out. My office happens to have a window that my desk faces straight out to those entrance exits. I can count at least five vehicles a day who come through there and simply use our property to turn around. I don't know why they're using it, but they do. We even last year had a semi jackknife trying to turn around and destroyed part of our landscaping in front of the current gym school area. So we're concerned about traffic that cannot turn left coming from the south accessing the, the proposed units and traveling further north then and using our property. The biggest concern is because we have an elementary school, preschool through eighth grade, more traffic on property is potentially dangerous to students. We're very concerned about the safety of children second issue uh, that's related directly to that is, again, security of children. Right now, that uh, property that we own is a cornfield and will remain that, separating the proposal and our current use property. But in the future, we would like to build a church there. Right now, it is empty to our south there are playgrounds for the children. Will there be any fences along the north side of this property? Um, again, security and safety of children. In the proposal, it does mention future construction then of 36th Street. I ask a question, is there any target date for the reconstruction of 36th Street yet? We've been holding off on some renovation of parking lot, et cetera, just to get an idea of what the elevation is going to be because we don't know. Drainage is a serious problem on our property right now. The water runs down from the base housing, which is higher elevation than 36th Street across 36th Street to our property and the same type of problem on uh, the proposal here. So we do raise the issue of drainage from this property. On the platting, there are several retaining walls. The major retaining wall is on the northwest corner. That would be the upper left-hand corner, which <coughs> abuts our property. How high is that going to be? What provision is made then <coughs> for drainage? 
even the public works engineer and what I received at the <coughs> on the uh, attachment to your agenda this uh, past week said he had comments about both drainage and access. So I guess I'm just confirming that and would like some answers <coughs> on what the provisions are. I think that covers our question. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Yes. Could, could you say your last name again and also spell it for us? <laughs> <laughs> Gladly. Wazikowski, W-A-S-I-K-O-W-S-K-I. Thank you. I'm a native South Omaha boy. <laughs> Anyone else with public testimony, either for or against? With that, I'll close the public hearing. Would the applicant like to respond, Father Wozikowski? Certainly. Uh, thank you. Uh, you know, we certainly share um, St. Matthew's Church and Father Wozikowski. With Wasikowski's concerns about the traffic. Um, you know, one of the reasons that this, you know, we believe this site is ready for development is because hopefully we're going to see 36th Street improved very quickly. Um, the, uh, as far as the left turn movement in and out of this property currently, uh, there's nothing to restrict that access. We certainly won't encourage it, but we'll have the same access that the church has to the north. The restriction on that traffic movement will come when 36th Street is, in, is improved and there'll be a median there. That's when, in reality, that will become a right-in, right-out um, intersection there. <coughs> um, the, um, as, as far as the fence along our north property line, in all honesty, we really hadn't even gotten that far into our planning. Uh, at some point here very soon, we will want to sit down with the church and, and visit with them about uh, the access and make sure that as we work towards that, that construction is going to be beneficial to both properties because it's going to be important to both properties. We can certainly discuss, you know, some fence issues like that for concerns. Uh, because of the topography of this property, basically everything on our side other than up at that entrance will fall away from the church property. Our grading, we will be dropping the grade along the north side uh, to accommodate that road to get down in the bottom. So we won't have any issues with any drainage from our site going on to their site. The retaining walls that are planned over in the northwest corner are, uh, are not anticipated to be uh, of significant height, and, and I'm not real sure right off the top of my head, but at some point, if they do get above, I think it's five feet, they have to have a fence on top. We will certainly, you know, accommodate that. Um, and, you know, from what I understand, and I might be, you know, I'm just, you know, kind of hearsay, I guess, it's anticipated from what I've been told that the 36th Street construction should start sometime in 2016. That's the last date that I kind of heard, uh, and, and, and I'm sure that's a... I think we're hoping for 15. 15? Okay, 15. Okay, 15. That's even better, for, obviously, for everyone. This project, we hope to break ground this summer, start some grading. By the time we get this project built and start actually moving people in, we're looking well into 2015. So we would anticipate, particularly with that earlier start date, that this project will come online within a reasonable amount of time of when the 36th Street improvements will be completed. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Father Wasikowski, did you understand the, the access response that the, the, the southern access, which is going to be in the initial access, will be both, will be a full movement yes. initially? <clears throat> And then when 36 is done, that will change to right in, right out. And then the one on the north side will have the full access. So hopefully people aren't driving up to your, up to your, ac your entrances to get to that. I understand that now. I didn't get that from the platting. Okay. Uh, I thought that was for right now, initially. Now the, the initial, that southern, will be a full access. Okay. The, I did fail to mention one question. The, I received two different plats, one that came out with the letter that came to us, and that was 100 units. Basically, I don't know, are you aware of that? It has been the, 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 the initial application when we did the letters was for 100. 
Right. Um, and so this they, one has been revised. Yes. Yeah, they're all they're only ninety. And then point. there was another change, and that is the road that um, you're talking about for the future on the north end of this property cuts across our property line. In the initial one, it did not do that. It was purely on this lot. Yeah, that is correct. Is there a reason why that happened? Well, the, initially... Go the, the, the plans for 36th Street, um, when you do a widening project like that, you need to limit the number of access points so you don't just have a lot of driveways off a major street like that. So the 36th Street plans will have the access point at the property line so that both the church and the apartments can take advantage of, of one access point instead of having separate ones, which would be lead to more conflicts on the street, um, slower speeds because of sure, more traffic in and out. So. That, that's why that access point is there. Um, I, I think initially your the submittal may not have had those um, in the correct location, but uh, early on when and the city did sell this property to um, Dr. Wayne Labart, there was a memorandum of understanding as far as where that full access point would be, and that is at that north end. And you know, just for, you know, further expand on that. We've been working very closely with Public Works and planning on how these access points were going to work there, where they were going to be located. That southern access point, quite frankly, has moved numerous times to try to get it in the right spacing for, from Public Works perspective to not interfere with traffic flows, turning movements, things of that type on South 36th Street. So it actually just moved another 27 feet, I think it was, north just within the last day or two, which this plan, I think, represents that. The initial plan that you saw with the, the, with the north right. driveway, we, we had that shown initially on our side only because we thought at that time we were probably going to have to have at least two ways in and out in the short term. And now we, you know, everybody's okay with the one for now, knowing that the second one will be coming online within a couple of years. So because it's intended to serve both properties, it makes sense to have it centered on in some fashion on that north property line. So that's why the revision of this one now, because the intent is clearly for that to serve both properties. And of course, that's why I say we'll have to get together with you folks and figure out the logistics of doing that and how that's going to work best to serve both properties. Sure. So, okay. I will now close the public hearing. <laughs> I'll turn it over to the commissioners. Commissioners? Question for staff. On that north entryway, as it's proposed on your map there, where does the city or county's right-of-way end? It is here. Okay, so how can we approve a plat without the neighboring owner approving an easement on that sliver of road that's on his land that's not in the right-of-way? Well, you're, you're not or approving a, a plan, you're, sorry. You're, Don't we need some easement or something in place or the mixed-use agreement would require an easement to be in place? That that, that um, access will be built as part of the 36th Street project. So it, it'll be there when the when the when the project is done. That that access will be there. It, it is a I say a future access. Um, the the plat that we have in the office that we're going to do administratively um, will have to have at least. On, on this property, the, the easement up in this area for, um, for access to the church property. I, I don't know if I answered all your question or not. <laughs> well, I guess my, ultimately, how do we show a plat? Again, this is not a plat, but if you've got a plat where you're showing an entryway beyond the right-of-way, somehow we need an easement agreement in place with the neighboring property owner. I don't know why we would do all this planning on where that driveway is on the north side without making sure they're in the loop and have an easement in place. Which I guess the second question, if that north driveway never goes in, is this adequate with one entry point, which I think I'm hearing yes. I noticed the fire department did not make any comments in terms of needing multiple access points. 
Uh, yeah. Mr. Hill, I think, had a comment. <laughs> I certainly understand where Mr. Ackley is coming from. He wants to make sure that, you know, there, there's not going to be any issues down the road. The mixed-use agreement requires that access to be built in conjunction with the 36th Street improvements. Um, I mean, it's, it's obviously in everybody's best interest to make sure that happens, not only ours, of course, but the churches. You know, we could access that new median break solely on our side if necessary, but that's certainly not our intent. We're obviously want to work with the church and I hope they realize it's in their best interest to have that access there also. We don't want to landlock them and that's certainly not our intent. So we can still have that access if absolutely necessary, but we're moving ahead with the assumption it's going to be a shared access with St. Matthew's Church. Me, a question? Mr. Hill, I have a question for you. Sorry. <laughs> this, uh, this may very well be a process question as well, but um, I noticed on the uh, corner you've got a second or future road coming off the property to access uh, Cape Heart Road showing yes. your drawing. And yet, even though the road to the north that we're discussing is a future shared full access, you don't show a future road going to the north onto that property. And so we're on the south, we're favoring that southern facing property with a future road on the drawing is my point but we show nothing or any agreement or proposal or at least anything on this particular drawing now maybe in the text and that's kind of my question for staff maybe I've overlooked it is we don't show that even though it's a full shared full access road we don't show anything going to the north for for shared access and so uh, as discussion taken place with the property owner as far as what that access looks like, it's going to the north, or what sort of alignment discussions? Have no, and that's what we were just busy about. We need to do that, but until the city finalizes their design on that median break, we really can't f design our intersection, if I, we will. I, I appreciate yeah. that on 36th Street, but I'm really talking if it's a few. I'm really talking. Oh, you're talking about the one on Cape Heart Road? Well, I'm talking about one here in the middle of the property going north. If it's a shared access, there should be an entry point going on the north side, right? Otherwise, it wouldn't be shared. It would oh, probably oh, be I, yours. I, I, I understand what you're saying now. And so if it truly is going to be a future shared access, I'm, I'm assuming some agreement's got to be put in place with the property owners to the north to say this is an agreeable entry access point on the north side, basically somewhere in here, because we've done that on the south side of drawing right Right. Here. Well, right. The, and the intent of the shared access is at the north side there on that common property line at 36th Street. The grade of this property would not lend itself to an access to the north to the church property so, unless so, they drop their grade significantly. So shared access means? The access to 36th Street. Is, at, not, is not shared by anybody but this property? No, it's shared. With, the intent is to be shared with the church and this property. How, how is the church going to utilize that access? Because the road will, by being centered on the north property line, Half the road will be on their side, half the road will be on our side, so they'll have access to it on the north side. Okay, so right at the right of way. Well, and, and extending back a reasonable distance. Yeah, then yes. they, would, they would have basically another road of their own. Exactly. And, uh, they can connect. Design they yeah, when they okay. finalize okay. their plans, I appreciate that. Okay. they'll be able to connect okay. to okay. that. That helps me out. Okay. okay. I got a question for you, Mr. Hill, before you sit down. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think your intent is what I'm hearing here right now is, you know, the road actually going down, the shared access shows that coming into your property you know with the road going down there on the north side but like you said as soon as you get in there then if the church develops their property it'll veer off to the right to access theirs also absolutely and if i'm hearing you correctly what you're trying to end up doing here is you're saying you could actually move that access down to your property only but what would happen is if the church goes and develops theirs then you've got an exit going there and in going there and then you've got another exit and in going in there and you're just trying to cut down on so many different areas entrances off of 36th Street. exactly okay and ultimately they could end up with the t intersection and we want to try to blend those two together and make it more functional for everybody right yeah okay. one more uh, fine fine point if i may uh, same sort of drawing question i appreciate your comments is on the right in right out access i think we've all agreed that that is a um, uh, basically a future development Right now, it's going to be full access until the roads. Yes, that's correct. Would, would the drawing itself be better served to say full access plan, right in, right out? 
because there's nothing that really, I mean, this drawing doesn't necessarily, this drawing represents a future state, not necessarily a, a near-term state. Is, is yeah, right. and, that, and that's probably true. I mean, what the drawing represents is the developed plan at the right. end. That's what the mixed use requires, okay. is what's it gonna look like when it's done. That's what the intent was. It may be, yeah, and I understand what you're saying. It's a little confusing right now because essentially it will be a full access until that median goes in. But so, and, and I agree, and, and I'm, I'm fast forwarding six months from now and our memories have faded a little bit. Sure. We look at this drawing and we'll go, how did we get there type of thing. So. But it is, I believe, in my, in my, it's clearly defined in the mixed use agreement, okay. which everybody will be a party of, as to exactly what happens with those various driveways. Okay. Thank yeah. you. That's the documentation that literally backs everything up that we're talking about here. Great. Okay. Thanks. You bet. Mr. Carnish, I have a question for Mr. Shuchuk. You, um, you said, uh, Mr. Shuchuk, that uh, the drainage issues have been resubmitted in public works and it was an NRD, I can't even remember. If public works it, reviewed it, the submittal okay. from their engineer and found those to be acceptable. Okay. Mr. Suchuk, so right now we're comfortable with the right one right in, uh, one right out. Yes. For this development. Well, well, it'll be a full access until the road until 36th Street is widened, <coughs> proved. Then that one will be a right in, right out, and the one on the north will be the full access. Right. But <laughs> initially, it will have one full access driveway. Thank you. And yes, the fire department is satisfied with that. All right. And if I understand it right, Mr. Suchuk, the road could be completed at the same time that these would come into use, possibly. Possibly. <laughs> I mean, it's, that was what's in the thought and plan, in a way. The road will probably be done after, after their, the their apartment, road. especially if they get going this year. Um, probably have occupancy in 2015. I think our the road project will probably start in 2015. Okay. Could I ask a question regarding the timing of that? If the if for some reason 36th Street is delayed considerably beyond the construction of the apartments, would it be is there is there an ability within the mixed use agreement to bond for the construction of that entrance on the north side? Because there's one in the landscaping that it talks about it, but there's the, not anything in the access side. The, that talks the about north it. entrance will, will will not will be something that is constructed as part of the street to, project to the property line. But from the property line, then I, I think as part of the building permit, we're going to have them. They'll be required to do what's on their site plan. Okay, and so you'll actually construct. Or require the construction of that access all the way to the property line. Yes. They're in the apartment side. And then there'll just be a then joint. The, the, the city, when we improve 36th Street, will we'll make that connection. Okay. Thanks. One additional question, if I might. Mr. Jacobson. Thank you. Uh, on the, the west side of the development, I'm, I'm looking at the topological map. Question for staff is the, the park is immediately adjacent to that on the west. Is the aerial. Yes. Yes, and we're looking at the aerial. And, and my question centers around that, that as this is built out and, and occupied, as the occupants attempt to use the park, if there's a fairly substantial fall off, it looks like there's on the west side that uh, the proposal is for a retaining wall and garages and some parking is that 
is the access then intent park access intended to be off of Cape Heart Road via sidewalk or is there an integration between this property and the, the park property I, th I think the long-term plan will be to have some sort of trail along the creek in here okay um, and again that's just long-term nothing definite right. yet as far as where that might be um, and then this whole area in here is also a designated park as well. So these, these residents would, would take this uh, right in, right out access, walk along 36th Street, walk along Cape Art Road to get to the park, or they would go and through they, their they, own they property. They would probably have, okay. you know. Well, this, well the, I, I guess that, that my question, trail my, is. <laughs> okay, then my question for the applicant is that, that even though you don't have that level of detail shown yet, the intent is to Yes, I mean, we would anticipate in, in the very southwest corner where the future road connects to the curve there, we would anticipate having a trail connection from there immediately okay. from our site going west and tied into what we hope will be a future trail Perfect. in that park. Perfect. Yeah, Thanks. so we should have a reasonable access, paved access sidewalk to that trail okay. and to the park. Yeah, I saw the retaining wall. And you I bet, yeah, the retaining wall stops, you know, to the north by the garages and generally from the garage down this way the topography would lend itself to that. Perfect. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, Mr. Hill, we, we've, <laughs> and when you talk about the retaining wall, would you be talking with uh, Father Wysokowski about the height issues? Oh, yeah, sure. We will certainly, once we get to the final design, we know exactly how high it can be. We can certainly visit with them about that also and try to eliminate any concerns they may have like, as child safety, things of that type. So exactly. You bet. Okay. Absolutely. Thank yep. you. Question for staff. I'm still troubled by this north entryway. So let's assume, for purposes of pulling permits and whatnot, until 36th Street is actually improved, you intend that they would build that road shown on the site plan up to property line, or would everything really that's shown in the the dotted line there for that road really not go in until 36th Street was done. In other words, we're relying on that center entrance, which in the future will be right in, right out. It would be my intention that everything shown on there would be built at the beginning, um, not, not waiting till later to get them to, to put in the road or driveway. So then the road would come to a, a stop until 36th Street, or they would connect to what's currently 36, and as 36th Street gets widened, it just gets consumed by the road. I, I didn't follow that last part. <laughs> okay. They would actually connect up with 36th Street, even if 36th Street is two lane at the time that road is installed. No. So they would build the road, stop at the property line, no, and they can't no, actually use that access point. Right. Okay. So in the future, again, tell me the timing and process here for pulling permits in terms of how do we confirm they have an easement agreement with the neighbor of the north before they start pulling permits if it's your intent that that road exists. Well, we can make con permits contingent on on that and certificates of occupancy contingent on that too because they have to develop in accordance with the approved plan okay and there'd be no point in waiting till certificate of occupancy right if we didn't know they had an easement in place in other words let's make sure we get an easement in place with the neighbor before we start doing anything there and mr hill i would assume your client would probably like that figured out sooner rather than later We would have them put the road in and stop at the property line until 36th Street is widened. What's that going to look like in terms of how many people are going to try to use it? That's blowing my mind here. Why wouldn't they actually connect it up with 36th Street even while it's two lane? Let's assume for whatever reason funding is pushed off till 2016, 2017, 2018. I, I think we could probably. If if Public Works would be agreeable to another access on 36th Street, but why have them build something that's going to be torn out in a 
in a year. And I guess how much work would be done there, Mr. Hill, in terms of? Yeah, can I speak to that? The, the conversations we've had with Public Works is Public Works does not want that access there until the 36 streets improvements were completed. So it was our intent that the, that the access that's shown in the dashed line basically from the 90 degree corner right, right to the left of lot one, that would be built and I think the mixed use agreement states that that will be built during the 36th Street reconstruction so that when that construction's complete, then that access will be open and, and viable when the city says, okay, you can use it now. So, so we would build that access in conjunction with the 36th Street construction. And I guess we did me, not intend to build it in the first phase developing the apartment project. I'm hearing a disconnect. So let's get that part yeah. resolved here. But, and you raised a good point is, you know, it, I mean, it puts the burden on us to get the easement, get that road alignment resolved with St. Matthews. We, we, the agreement does say that the drive shall be constructed during the improvement of 36th Street, shall be open for use upon completion, acceptance of completed 36th Street project. So, the clarification and correction, this part wouldn't be done until 36th Street was in progress and they'd be done in conjunction with each other. You know, perhaps we could ask St. Matthews if they would anticipate any issues from their standpoint of joining us <coughs> to build that access. Because, you know, there's going to be a certain amount of burden on them too to cooperate. <coughs> well, again, until everything's on paper and signed by two parties, that's yeah, why I understand, we're but yeah. figuring this out. I guess question for staff, let's assume based on the language you have in the mixed use agreement, that for whatever reason, even once 36th Street is widened, they can't get an agreement then with St. Matthews on that easement. Would you have them install the road on their side then using that access, but all on their property lot one? Or would you then say, we'll just go with that single point of access in the center of the development as shown? I think we would do whatever we could to have that full access because we're not going to give them a, a full access there. We would definitely want a, a full access somewhere else and we'd do our best obviously to work. If they can't reach an agreement with the church, the city would work with the church to try to get that. And it, it's in the church's best interest to have a, an access down at that point too because they're, they're not going to get a... I would, you know, Assume they're not going to get a full. They're not going to get a, another full access uh, to their property. This is the the proposed location of the full access. But potentially to, to, could to they serve that? Potentially they could access their property from their property to the north on the west side, couldn't they? I suppose if they want to do this. <laughs> yeah. So. I guess in terms of the mixed use agreement on page two, Romanet eight, for access. Or that paragraph, second line from the bottom, talks about the last sentence of drive shall be constructed during the improvements of 36th Street and shall be open for use upon completion. Again, we can't control the neighboring landowner without an agreement. So at the very least, we have to change that language to say, and shall, comma, subject to obtaining an easement from the adjoining owner, be open for use upon completion and acceptance. Because without their approval, that road cannot go on their property beyond the right-of-way line. Which again, just from the city's perspective, if we have that language, shall subject to obtaining an easement from the adjoining owner, ultimately if they don't obtain that easement, is the city going to be okay with one access point when that is fully developed? Or would the city then make them basically redo that road so that it is all on lot one? And I appreciate what you said, that chances are St. Matthews as the adjoining owner will want that access point. but it's in writing we don't know that I'll, 
I'll say that by the time 36th Street is ready to be widened, we'll know if there is an agreement with St. Matthews. And if there's not, um, if they're saying they don't want access from their property to 36th Street, I would assume that Public Works would say, okay, we'll move this down 30 feet and give it all to, to this property. I'm just trying to think through the scenarios here if we don't get an easement. Again, I assume we'll get one, but we, we've seen plenty of other things over the years that if the agreements weren't in place to begin with, we get trouble later on. I got a question for staff. On that, Mr. Shushak, that future road coming in that they would share, if I remember correctly, and Mr. Hill was up here speaking, that was actually to the south more. On their on their property, correct? At one time. Well, are you talking about one of the original drawings that right. they submitted? I, th I think you said yes. You had that on there. And and actually, the city of Bellevue was Public Works was fine with that coming in right there at that point in time. I, I I'm gonna say no. I I think the city's um, pu Public Works always said that it needs to be at. That common property line. Correct. That's why it was moved to the property line to serve okay. both properties. Yes, that's correct. Well, and with that in mind, Mr. Shuchuk, I'm thinking of the house that just went in off of S.P. Benson Drive and Cornhusker, where again you've got an access point that straddles two property lines because you couldn't get an agreement with the adjoining owner on allowing the road to come in on theirs, you basically sent the road immediately jut to the right and then jut onto the other owner's property. In other words, the reality would be that entryway should stay straddled on that property line, but if they don't get an easement with the neighbor to start with, they would basically have to do an immediate kind of a right, right turn in and then smooth onto their line. You know the property I'm thinking yes. of? So would that be accurate to say? I mean, that entryway shouldn't move. That should say uh, straddle on the property line. If we're not going to allow other entryways along 36th Street between that property and the what's currently the church property. It, it should stay on the property line, yes. Okay. Unless there's any further comments, I guess I'd be proposed ready to make a motion. I would recommend approval of the application subject to number one, the mixed use agreement in Romanet 8. That first paragraph, last sentence, should be revised. The state, the drive shall be constructed during the improvements of 36th Street and shall, comma, subject to obtaining an easement from the adjoining owner, comma, be open for use upon completion and acceptance of completed 36th Street project by Bellevue City Council. And I recommend approval of this based upon it being in conformance with the zoning ordinance and the comprehensive plan. Second. Mr. Shuchek, I apologize. I believe you also mentioned we need to revise the mixed use agreement to also show that it would have uh, no more than 80% of any type of one use within that mixed use development. Yes, we intend to put that in. So there. I would amend my motion to that extent, Mr. Jacobs. Agreeable. Thanks. Second. Motion by Mr. Ackley, seconded by Mr. Jacobson. Mr. Carter, I just got one, sure. one thing I'd like to say, actually, with uh, considering. Mr. Hill's property there that they're working on and actually the church, I think it would be beneficial probably to the to the church also down the road if, if people could get together and make that an access where they jointly share that because I think for the church and stuff with St. Matthew's going in there, 
it might be kind of hard to access a church, you know, and you might want another access down there, but that stuff can be done at a, at a later date, you know, but I, I think it would be beneficial to both of you. I just want to make that comment and throw it out there. Any further discussion? Commissioners, please vote. All in favor, motion carried. This item passed and we'll move to the City Council public hearing on March 24th, 2014. Let the record indicate Mr. Gladback has returned to chamber 7.50 p.m. Thank you, Mr. Carnage. Our second public hearing tonight is a request to add a new section 8.14 to the City of Bellevue zoning ordinance regarding the keeping of horses in a residential zoning district. Applicant, City of Bellevue. Staff, any updates? No updates. Um, I just will make comments on uh, the memo you received. Um, we've had uh, over the years uh, several requests for zoning changes on larger lots um, from say R72 to RE so that people could keep horses. Um, we looked at those and thought instead of doing zoning changes for just that purpose of allowing somebody to keep horses, a um, better way to go about this might be to just allow the horses on the larger lots. Uh, we allow them in the RS120 and the RE as long as there's an acre um, of lot area. So this proposed amendment uh, would make horses allowable as a accessory use on any lot in any zoning district as long as there is um, at least one acre of lot size. Um, the, the, and also there would have to be a single family residence on the property as a principal permitted use. Um, the other requirements uh, in 81403 and 81404 that you see there are the same as that we already have in the RS120 and the RE regarding um, distance from property lines and other structures for the stables and corrals and also as far as the number of horses that could be on a, on a lot uh, based on the size. Basically, it's going to be two horses per acre. <coughs> and um, if you want to open public hearing and then we can ask any, have any questions for discussion. Okay, uh, if anyone in here is, um, cares to provide public testimony on this matter, whether in favor or opposition, please come forward. S seeing nobody move forward, I will go ahead and close the public hearing. Commissioners, what are your wishes? There's no further discussion. I'd be prepared to make a motion. I'd recommend approval of this recommended change to the zoning ordinance, section 8.14, to add that for the keeping of horses in residential areas. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Ackley, a second by Ms. Kane. Is there any further discussion? Commissioners, please vote. All in favor, motion carried. Okay, this item moves to the City Council for public hearing on March 24th, 2014. Our third request for, uh, our third public hearing tonight is a request to amend section 4.13, 5.06, and 5.07 of the City of Bellevue zoning ordinance regarding accessory structures and residential zoning districts. Applicant, City of Bellevue. Staffing updates? Uh, again, no updates other than um, on the memo, as we stated, we're making a few changes here in the RA and the RE district where the 
accessory structures up to 3,000 square feet are currently listed as a conditional use and have to go through Planning Commission and City Council for approval, um, which by the way, the council has never denied one and really has very little discussion ever on, on any of these. Um, we're proposing to make those um, just permitted accessory uses without having to go through the um, CUP process. All the other regulations would still apply to those. Um, also in the um, for other zoning districts we're, we're making a change it's again for larger lot sizes currently the restriction or the limits on an accessory structure in any zoning district um, regardless of lot size an accessory structure can be no greater than 750 square feet or 50% of the building size up to a maximum of 1,200 square feet. Um, this amendment would allow on lots greater than one acre in size up to a 1,200 square foot accessory structure um, without, you know, well, regardless of the size of the, of the primary structure on the, on the lot. And then on lots one acre in size or smaller, we would still continue with the maximum of 750 or 50 percent of the building footprint. And we did add in there the clarification for ease or overhangs. Um, uh, less than two feet in depth shall not be included in the building footprint area. We get some that have big wide overhangs if they're more than um, two feet in depth. And, and that's the number that we just decided on. There was nothing magical about that number. Um, if they're, if they're wider than that, they're gonna be part of the building footprint and uh, count as far as the square footage. Um, all the other requirements are um, for accessory structures would remain the same. Okay. If uh, anyone cares to provide public testimony on this matter, please come forward, sign and state your name. And seeing nobody move forward, I go ahead and close the public hearing and turn it over to the commissioners for discussion. Uh, one question I do have, Mr. Chuchek, about the, um, the two feet in depth. If you had an overhang that's greater than two feet, it wouldn't be the, the entire roof plate area that'd be calculable. It'd be whatever the, that area is less the two feet, correct? I think our intention is that the entire overhang would be if it's calculated. Great, if it's greater than two if feet. The, if the building were 100 feet wide, the overhang was three feet wide, you'd consider it 103 feet. Yes, as opposed to 101, not counting the two feet. Okay. I would think that if you, had, if you decide to have a, a larger overhang, you'd be penalized by you know, an additional two feet on that, those those footprints. Well, you are, right? In other words, oh, yeah, you are. you're overhanging five feet, instead of it being a 100 foot wide building, it's <coughs> 105 feet, which, well. Yeah. So that's the intent. Yeah, yes, that's the intent. I guess in your experience, Mr. Gladback, how often is it that people have a greater than two foot overhang on a large building like that that may impact? It all depends what the function of it is. I mean, if they're using it as a, you know, kind of an open work area, you know, you could probably consider that as part of, you know, the, the actual building area. But if you do have a utility building with, uh, you know, some windows in it, let's, let's say, you know, they uh, are encouraging some some wider overhangs for solar shading in, in some of these structures as well. You know, primarily residential, you know, if you have a utility building, it's a different story. But uh, I guess, you know, I would have a feeling that, um, or a feel that um, if we are exceeding greater than two feet on an overhang, I wouldn't mind seeing the, the overall roof plate less the two feet count as the, the actual building area.
Tell me how that measure would work. You're talking about roof plate you're looking at from the top. If down. you have a three foot overhang on a hundred or a, let's say a 20 by 20 building. Um, if you have a three foot overhang, it would be basically a 20, if you have three feet all the way around, it'd be a 22 by 22 building now because you're adding one foot plus a two foot overhang. You're, you're kind of saying you get credit for the two feet. Exactly. Okay. The 20 by 20 building with three foot overhang would be measured as a 21 by 21. Right. Or 22 by 22 if it's a three foot overhang both sides. No. It'd be a 26 by you 26. Get the two feet on every side, right? For the two sides. Yeah, that. Because yeah. the roof, roof plate would be 26 by 26 if it's three foot on both sides. So you subtract the two, it's. I'm quickly exceeding my knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> I guess my opinion is if we have the two foot depth and the, um, you know, as a, a basis, you know, if they do have a, a wider overhang just slightly, that it'd give you credit for the two feet. Is that fair, Mr. Shuchek? And that's giving that to me. <laughs> <laughs> I would assume this would be pretty rare in terms of. I was going to say, typically on the garages I see, you don't have an eave that's greater than two feet. Some people come in and have a 12 foot kind of roof attached to the garage, which they call an overhang, which is really part of the garage itself because it's to function as, you know, protection for a vehicle or to park cars underneath. So it's. I would say it's pretty rare that I would see an actual eave that would be greater than the two feet. Two foot is generally the norm that a lot of people come up with, but you know, there's those rare cases. You may see, see something a little bit wider. So do you have proposed language, Mr. Gladbach? We can come up with something that works for us if, if that's the intent from, from the commission that we would allow that. I'd be okay that, with that. The allowance for mm -hmm. the, the two feet. Can I just ask a question for clarification on the setback measurement? Is that from the face of the building or from the edge of the eave? It would be from the, the face of the building. Or I'll, I'll say in the case if you if or you got an overhang where, where we're measuring the the building footprint the, the roof or the building footprint yes mm -hmm. thank you although no, I'll just leave it at that yes <laughs> I'm just disappointed the press isn't here to get all of this in their articles this is good stuff. <laughs> They'll get a recording of it. <laughs> yes, we can hear each other. Well, do I make the motion or can I make the motion? I don't care if you do. Okay. <laughs> Any further discussion on that? Well, with that in consideration, I would um, like to make a motion to um, have the, the uh, city planning department make the uh, corrections to uh, allow the two foot credit or additional um, or to provide the two feet uh, as a minimum and then provide um, as a credit to the footprint of the building. Second. May, may I ask for clarification that you're yes. saying just just um, that addition to section five, or are you moving on, to on uh, on uh, paragraph four, four and, five. and five? Yes. yes. Okay, so it's just that correction. Then. It's just that correction okay. on those two paragraphs. Thank you. Any further discussions? Commissioners, please vote. Leland, did you second that? Yeah. Okay. Legal and Jacobson, uh, second it. Yeah. 
Okay. All in favor, motion carried. Okay, this item goes to the City Council for public hearing on March 24th, 2014. With that, that ends our public hearing for tonight. Good morning.